Hello and welcome to This Week in Big Sky Football presented by Jimmy Johns. I'm Carl Hunt and today our guests include Sacramento State Head Coach Troy Taylor, Weber State Defensive End George Tarlis, Big Sky Commissioner Tom Wistersill, and Stats Craig Haley. Let's take a look back at some highlights from this past weekend. Montana used a 59-point performance to beat Idaho State to improve to 2-0 in league play. Weber State came away with a 41-35 win in a game which included a fake field goal for a touchdown. Portland State registered a 52-31 win over Southern Utah to pick up its first conference win of the season. UC Davis made a late run on the road at North Dakota, but came up short, falling to the Fighting Hawks 38-36. Sacramento State picked up a win in its Big Sky opener, defeating Eastern Washington 48-27. Northern Arizona recorded a 41-23 win over Northern Colorado at home. Montana State topped Cal Poly in overtime 34-28 to remain undefeated in league play. The Big Sky has four teams ranked in the FCS Top 25 polls. In the Stats FCS and AFCA coaches poll, Weber State, Montana State, Montana, and UC Davis are all ranked with the Wildcats leading the way at number four. In addition, Sacramento State, Eastern Washington, Cal Poly, and Idaho are receiving votes. Big Sky Root Sports Offensive Player of the Week honors went to Montana quarterback Dalton Sneed for the third straight week. Weber State defensive end George Tarlis was named the Defensive Player of the Week honoree while Northern Arizona's Louis Aguilar earned his second special teams weekly honor this season. Remember, Root Sports is the official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. When we return, Sacramento State head coach Troy Taylor will join us on the show. Stay tuned to This Week in Big Sky Football. Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships are headed to Boise. Buy your tickets now for a fun-filled week with basketball for all to enjoy. Purchase your tickets today by visiting BigSkyInBoise.com. That's BigSkyInBoise.com. We would like to welcome Sacramento State head coach Troy Taylor to our show today. Coach, welcome. Glad to have you on our show for your first ever appearance. Oh, great. Great to be here. Your team is coming off a win over a ranked opponent. Take us back through that game and what worked for you guys to come away with a victory. You know, I think it was uh, all three phases were really good. Um, it was a, you know, a true team win. There were a number of situations. You know, obviously you're, you're playing a, a a great team that's uh, been doing it well for a long time and uh, had our challenges on all three phases and uh, I think our guys hung in there. There were a number of times where the game was could kind of swing either way. Uh, you know, when we turn the ball over on the end, when they're trying to run the clock out and then our defense gets a, gets a big stop and a scoop and score. And then uh, they closed uh, the game to within seven points in the fourth quarter and the offense did a great job of going 75 yards and about six and a half minutes convert on a bunch of third downs uh, to put us back up by 14. And I thought our, our special teams did a nice job of, of uh, kind of backing them up and putting them on a long field and making them work a little bit. But uh, just a, a very uh, resilient team that we have that uh, was able to, to hold on and win the game. Now, this is your um, first head coaching job. What excited you about the Sacramento State job? Yeah, I, I mean, I was a head coach in the, at the high school level, but uh, for the college level, yeah, you're right. Um, I, I'd say um, one is uh, familiarity with the area and the school and the people around here. Um, I knew that uh, there was great high school football from coaching high school football for you know in the area for a long time. Um, so there's a ton of ton of kids that can play at this level. Um, and then I would say uh, just just seeing that uh, Mark Orr, our athletic director, and our president, Dr. Nelson really wanted to be successful and they were willing to do things in order to be successful in terms of paying assistant coaches, um, getting a strength and conditioning coach, summer school for our players paid, and then, um, you know, given, given uh, me and our staff a long-term deal, seven-year contract that really showed that they were, uh, it just wasn't lip service. You know, they, they really wanted to do things differently and be successful. So um, those are the two things. Um, and then coming home was always nice. You know, there's a lot of people that, care about and my family still lives here so um, I would say those are the those are the three main things and uh, you know bottom line is I I felt that uh, I could put together a really good staff um, and we could be successful here um, in the long term just can, we could put consistent winners together and uh, you know we'll, we'll see if that happens but uh, certainly optimistic with our start. Now, you started your Big Sky career in 2016 as the co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Eastern Washington. Did that experience help give you a good background of what you could expect as a head coach in the Big Sky? 
Yeah, I did. I, you know, my experience in Eastern Washington was incredible. I coached, uh, you know, under uh, Bo Baldwin and uh, with with Aaron Best there and a bunch of guys that are still there in Eastern Washington. So really was able to see how to run a successful um, FCS program. And uh, it was, uh, they were just tremendous coaches and it's a great culture they build there. And then I think the familiarity with what people do um, offensively and defensively, kind of how it works. And then the talent level and, you know, so coming into the, to this year, I wasn't completely blind or wasn't new to me um, having that experience. And so um, I think for sure that was a, uh, not only in my comfort level coming to the big sky, but also just learning. I learned a ton. Um, you know, I left Folsom High School and, uh, you know, I coached in college before way back when, but uh, getting back in and, and seeing uh, kind of how recruiting worked at this level and all those things um, certainly uh, gave me a, a, a lot of experience, a lot more knowledge and, and some confidence too. Now, your coaching experience covers all ranks, including your previous uh, stop at Utah. How did coaching at a Power 5 school help prepare you to take the head job at Sac State? Well, I mean, I, I think that, you know, football is, is, is football. And that's that's one thing I've learned is, you know, um, you know, being able to play at all the levels and then um, coming back and, and coaching at the high school level and, and then back at the two different levels in college, um, that, you know, I, I kind of feel like football is football. Now, it's, you know, depending on the level, the guys are going to move a little bit faster um, and be a little bit bigger. But it's still, when you're talking about scheme and teaching and understanding that, you know, um, when you're working with kids, um, they're all the same. I mean, they're just big kids, little kids, young kids, experienced players, you know. Um, they still have the same challenges, uh, insecurities, and need for confidence and belonging all those things drive uh, drive people the same way. So, um, and then the, the X and O part of it, um, I really felt like I became um, a much better coach when I went to the high school level because you have to really develop guys. Whoever rules up, you know, you got to be able to figure out a way um, to improve them, make it uh, simple to understand, um, and then be robust enough on offense and dynamic enough to keep people off balance and you still have a way to keep it simple for your own guys. So, I really felt like I developed the most as a high school coach. And then, you know, when I went to Eastern Washington, uh, I was wondering how it was all going to work at the college level. Um, and so um, luckily I, you know, hit them at an incredible time when Cooper Cup was there and uh, Kendrick Bourne and Shaq Hill and these incredible players and Antoine Custer and Gage Gubru, uh, quarterback, and um, a bunch of other kids that were really talented and have been developed and uh, able to take that scheme that I used at uh, Folsom and then learn some stuff at uh, Eastern Washington and then kind of um, kind of fuse them together, really. Um, but honestly, it's the same stuff that we've been running at Folsom that we're running here. They just, just kind of morphed it in a little bit and polished it up a little bit. And, um, you know, it's been fairly successful. So uh, we're having a great time. I got an unbelievable coaching staff. Um, that uh, I feel very fortunate to have really bright guys um, that love football, love student athletes, love coaching. You know, we don't we talk about it around here. This is not this is not a grind for us. We love what we do. Um, I know we talk to a lot of college football coaches, and they kind of complain how hard it is. I can't believe, um, and we can't believe we get paid to do this. So we're having a blast, and uh, each week is obviously a challenge. But our kids have bought in, and they totally believe in us, and we believe in them, and you got something special going on. What was it like to get your first win under your belt as a head coach? Um, you know, they really don't feel any different than, you know, Folsom High School or, you know, Eastern Washington or Utah. Honestly, the games, they're all the same to me. And so I get that question asked a lot or some form of it. But uh, for me, um, it's all really the same. Even as a player, you know, get to play a little bit in the NFL and in college and in high school and even Pop Warner, they've all been the same to me. Um, they're all really important. They're all really exciting. Um, you know, it's no different than waking up when you're a kid and playing Pop Warner when I played with for the Carmichael Colts back in the, you know, late 70s and being nervous and excited and, and all those things. I get those same feelings. Um, I'm just a little bit more comfortable now because I've seen, you know, if you have enough experience, you kind of see everything that could possibly happen. But 
felt the same. You know, um, I don't feel any more important as a head coach than I was as an assistant coach or an offensive coordinator. It's it's uh, we're all one group. Um, you know, my name's that uh, that is as the head coach, but you know, I trust my assistants. Andy Thompson is our defensive coordinator, and Jeremy LaPan is our special teams coordinator. I trust those guys to do their job, and I do my job as the offensive coordinator here, and I put it all together um, on uh, Saturday evening. Your team has been turning heads all season long. How have you gotten your players to buy into what you're selling? Well, I think the, uh, the message that we have as a staff resonated with them. You know, we're all about love, um, loving what we're doing, loving Sacramento State loving the city, loving the school, loving football, loving to compete, loving to work and practice. And it's authentic. It's sincere with our staff. And um, we have players that have, that feel the same way. And so I think it must have resonated with them. I mean, you have to ask them, but um, I think they know that we care about them. Now, that doesn't mean we're not incredibly demanding, detailed, and disciplined. We are, uh, but it comes from a good place where um, they know that we want them to be successful. And then we treat wins and losses as the same in terms of, how we move on. We don't spend a tremendous amount of time celebrating ourselves when we win, and uh, we don't pistol whip them and tell them how bad they are when they lose. We just kind of learn from it, and we move on. Clearly, we want to win. We want to be the best. That's the goal. But we just don't feel that um, spending an inordinate amount of time uh, talking about how we messed up is going to make us a better football team. So we just try to be really consistent. Um, Personally, I try to be the same guy. for every practice, for every game. And then at the end of the season, hopefully we look back and we feel great about it, but we're about being being mindful and being really in the moment and treating each day as the gift that it is. And uh, we take those things seriously. They're not just talking points for us. We're we're happy to be here and we're, we're really enjoying what we're doing. All right. Thanks for joining us on our show today, Coach. Good luck in your game on uh, Saturday at Montana State. Uh, that game is at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for having me. Fingers up. We'll be back shortly with our next segment of This Week in Big Sky Football. My Place Hotels is proud to be the official hotel of the Big Sky Conference. Need a hotel for work or just a night away? With over 50 hotels open and more on the way, we want to be your home away from home. Let My Place be your place. Enroll in our new loyalty program and stay rewarded. Next up on this week in Big Sky Football is Weber State defensive end George Tarlis. Thanks for joining us on the show today, George. Of course, my pleasure. You had one heck of a game last week at Idaho that led to you earning Big Sky Root Sports Defensive Player of the Week honors. Take us back through that game and give us your viewpoint of how it all went down from the defensive side of the ball. So it all started when our senior, Adam Rodriguez, had a concussion in the last game. And I figured I had a set path in this game. And I just had to focus the entire week and practice great. But um, when the game day came, it was it was more like the real feeling, you know, when you have to step out there and you got to make plays and make a name for yourself. But... I was trying to get the entire team on the same level with me so we can all perform our best, pretty much. All right. Uh, You're in your second season at Weber State. How have you learned to balance your commitment to the game and to academics? It's all about getting things done, I believe. So, you know, with homework, as a student, you have to get them done before the due date and not procrastinate. So when the practice and the game starts, you don't have to worry about your homework and not having a good grade in the class because you get it done instead of taking a nap or going out and wasting your time pretty much. You're originally from Greece and didn't start playing football until you moved to the United States. What made you pick up the game of football? Uh, When I first joined football, it was my junior year in high school and I play as a defensive end, and the coach just told me, go get the QB. So I was the leader in sacks in 4A in Idaho. I had 10 sacks in the season. So I figured I was pretty good at it, so I'll give it a shot. <laughs> uh, 
Um, how did you end up becoming a defensive end? Did, was that something your coach just kind of put you at and you excelled at it, or did you kind of gravitate to that position? Uh, that, that's where I started. I was I had the body for it, and I think it's way easier for me to gain weight and muscle than maintain a 230-pound weight to play a linebacker. So I figured if I go with defensive end and I put all my – commitment to it, I will be in a really good position because I have the size and the height so I thought, and I'm fast too because I played basketball so I had the skill from that so I felt it was a good position to be in. Is your family still in Greece? Uh, my father and his size is still in Greece. My mother and my siblings are here in the United States. Do you get back uh, often to go visit? So I haven't been back yet, but I'm going with my wife in May for a couple of weeks. Who has the better food, Greece or the United States? Um, Greece, for sure. <laughs> what What's the best thing over there? Euros. The Euros? Yep. And they're not the same on here whatsoever. <laughs> now, you lived in Boise prior to your arrival in Ogden. How did you end up at Weber State for football? So, like I said, I was playing basketball and football in high school. I wanted, I came from Greece thinking I was going to play basketball in college. It didn't work out that way. I didn't get it offered a scholarship for basketball. But Weber offered me to play for them and play football. And after having two good seasons in high school playing football, I figured – you know, I'll give it a chance. I'll get free education and give it my best and commit to the team. All right. That's Weber State defensive and George Tarlis. The Wildcats host Southern Utah this Saturday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Thanks for joining us on the show, and good luck this weekend. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for big sky action. The leading free internet television service in America will stream live sporting events, including up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and selected soccer, softball, and track and field events. Simply go to Pluto TV to find games from several different sports. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for all Big Sky action. Hey, Big Sky fans, we have a special guest on our show today as Big Sky Commissioner Tom Wistersill joins us. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great, Carl. Thanks for having me on today. You joined the Big Sky in December of last year, right in the middle of playoffs. That had to be an exciting way for you to start your job. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, the, my first week on the job, Eastern Washington hosted Maine in the semifinal game, so went up to Cheney and then certainly enjoyed that game since that was a... Uh, Quite an astounding victory there by the uh, by the Eagles. So that was a lot of fun. And then, uh, yeah, headed down to the championship game where they gave a valiant effort but came up a little short. But it uh, was a great way to get thrown right into it and see the the power and excitement behind uh, big, the Big Sky Conference and FCS football. You've had a chance to get to know the coaches and administrators. And the summer uh, Big Sky kickoff in Spokane provided a great opportunity to get to know the student-athletes as well. How was that experience for you? Well, it was great. Uh, you know, we're fortunate that we've got great support uh, around our conference, great media coverage uh, for our kickoff event in Spokane. As you know, Carl, lots of lots of people there, lots of fun. And uh, student athletes are always uh, exciting to be around, and they bring a lot of energy to it. Coaches are all in a good mood then, too, because it's August or the end of July. So every team's undefeated, feeling great about themselves. Uh, so I was really impressed with the, uh, with the media coverage. Uh, you know, as we all know, media has changed a lot away from all traditional media. You know, it used to just be a TV stations and the radio stations there. Now we have a ton of bloggers and, and other online, uh, groups that are covering college football and covering the big sky. And, uh, so that was a lot of fun. It was, it, it's interesting for me just having been a part of this for you know 25 years to see how much that's changed, uh, I think it's brought our product to a great number of people that wouldn't probably traditionally be a part of it. It's also given people an opportunities to start businesses around around this platform. 
And uh, I think it's great for us because it just it, it just allows for more coverage, more more ways for people to access content. And so that's been a lot of fun. But uh, no, uh, Spokane's a great host and uh, look forward to being back there in the years to come. Speaking about uh, new media, last week, the Big Sky and all the FCS conferences and their member institutions did a social media blast on Twitter with the hashtag FCS on game day. What was some of the thinking behind that initiative? So um, I am the chair of the FCS marketing committee for the uh, commissioners group. We've got a couple other commissioners and then Mike Kern from the Missouri Valley is, is kind of the head of, head of the, uh, the program. But we got to talking about something we could do to draw attention to FCS football. Um, I'm a big fan of the College Game Day show. Uh, when we met back in August as a commissioners group of FCS commissioners, we met at the ESPN headquarters and talked to them about this initiative. Um, they weren't very excited about it, quite frankly, and I understand. Um, they've got a lot, a lot of schools to cover, a lot of conferences to cover um, at the FBS level, but we're trying to promote FCS football. And uh, so we decided as a group, as a committee, that we would uh, work with all of our communications people across FCS football and really try to make a social media blitz to get it trending on, uh, on Twitter uh, to really push forward the initiative of, of FCS on game day. Um, so I was very impressed with what happened that day. I, it did trend on Twitter. Um, we saw a lot of schools, conferences, everybody get fired up about the initiative, received a lot of really positive feedback. Unfortunately, we didn't get the feedback from ESPN. So now we have to consider what the next step is. Do we do it again? Um, do we do it differently? Uh, the one thing that I think that I'd love to see us do this time is uh, can we get more student, can we get student athletes involved? You know, I think there's power there within the FCS football community uh, with 126 programs. I'm no mathematician, but if each team has, you know, 75 to 100 people, that's a lot of people that could help uh, you know, help us on the initiative of pushing for something. And what we're looking for is just a segment on game day where they spend a minute, minute 30 seconds, pick a game that they're interested that they're interested in or they think is the matchup of the week. Um, let the producers and the, and the talent at ESPN figure that out and just talk about it. I think there'd be great interest nationwide in that. And I know there's 126 programs that would that would watch the show that right now don't really have a reason to watch it other than they like college football. So overall, I'd give it a, uh, a B plus. If ESPN would have given us some response, um, I might have given it an A minus, but uh, I guess that just means we need to work harder. Big Sky Football has had a great season so far, and we're a few weeks into conference play. What have you seen from our teams that has you excited? Well, you know, this is my first full season, as we talked about earlier, and uh, I knew we had, you know, very talented teams. I knew we had good coaches. Um, what's impressed me the most is, you know, our home field advantages. You know, it's it, our parity in our league is impressive, and so it's hard to win on the road. So, you know, even some of our best teams uh, that seem to fluctuate a little bit sometimes week to week, uh, you know, it's hard to win on the road. So I love the parity in our league. That's what impresses me the most. Um, I've said it again. I've said, I mean, I said it in the past. I'll say it again. We're the deepest FCS conference uh, around the country. Um, you know, we might not have the team that's won the, nas the last few national championships, but um, I'd put the middle of our pack up against any middle of the pack, and hopefully our best teams have a chance to knock some of those teams off in the playoffs. So uh, it's been great. It's early. Um, I know we have a ton of games left. Uh, you know, I sound like a coach there, right? Every coach always says that right now. Well, we're proud of where we're at, but, you know, there's a lot of ball left. So, uh, but early indications are uh, we've probably got, you know, six teams that are very deserving of a playoff look. Now we'll just wait and see the way the rest of the season plays out. Someone told us that you have a plan to visit all 11 Big Sky full member schools and participate in a sport with, with the student-athletes. You've already played knockout, and you've already learned to throw the shot put. Are you ready to go pro in any of those activities? So, yeah, my first experience was up in Montana. Played a little knockout and played, uh, you know, uh, we were, you would call it horse up there. They played grizz. Uh, and uh, so, actually, one of their I, – I beat one of their best shooters up there. So, um, you know, 30 years ago I was playing college basketball, so that's at least a sport that I know I can play a little bit. 
the shot put at Idaho the other day was a different story. Um, you know, that's one of those things that I told Zach Short, who I was with from Idaho, who's who's a, a national qualifier in the shot put, that um, as, as expected, uh, people who are excellent at their craft make it look easy. Um, and he does make it look easy. Spinning and throwing that shot put when you're pushing it against your neck until you have to release it, that's really hard, really hard. And so I'm fairly coordinated, but I did not look coordinated throwing the shot put. So um, so if your question is, am I going pro in anything, the answer is no, and definitely not shot put. But we'll wait and see what the rest of the uh, – rest of the tour uh, has in store for me as I get out around the conference. It's been a lot of fun getting to know our student athletes, having fun with them. And, you know, hopefully they get to see the uh, conference office and the commissioner a little different light when I'm uh, out there trying to, uh, trying to, you know, I'm watching them and, 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 and their craft uh, while I attempt to uh, participate at a high level, which doesn't happen, but it was fun and it'll continue to be fun. Well, that's Big Sky Commissioner Tom Wistersill. Thanks for joining us on the show. Glad to be here, Carl. Thank you very much. All right, we'll be right back on this week in Big Sky Football. At Jimmy John's, we want your sandwich to arrive freaky fast, so it's freaky fresh. So we only deliver within five minutes of our stores and not farther. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Five minutes is not a guaranteed delivery time. Actual delivery times will vary. It's time for the one and only Craig Haley from Stats to join us on our show. How are you doing this week, Craig? I'm doing well, Carl. How are you? Doing well. <clears throat> there were definitely some outcomes this week that had fans biting their fingernails. Which games and or results had you a little on edge this week? <laughs> there, there were a lot, huh? You, you know, I, I would say the, the, the last, you know, five, six minutes of, of UC Davis's loss to North Dakota, you know, they were thrilling. I mean, it, it was fun, and, and, you know, it was so like Coach Hawkins to to go for that late two-point conversion. You know, of course, North Dakota drove for that winning field goal. But, you know, James Madison, you know, the number two-ranked Dukes, they went to overtime at Stony Brook. You know, that was a nail-biter. And, and you saw how Montana State was pushed to overtime by Cal Poly. But, you know, it is conference time, and this is what happens. You just need to survive in advance, and, and you know, they're going to be tight games all around. We know it's a little early to probably start be talking about playoffs, but looking at the FCS as a whole, what's the magic number to get a playoff spot? You know, in, in a 12-game regular season like this one, there figures to be more teams that get to that perceived magic number of seven Division One wins. You know, strength of schedule will matter. I mean, th- there will be some seven and five teams, you know, seven and four teams that don't play 12 games that will have a stronger resume than, than say, an eight and four team. I mean, I think it, it comes down to the strength of schedule, but you definitely want to get to those seven Division One wins. North Dakota State seems to be taking no prisoners this season. Do you see anyone in the Missouri Valley taking them down? Great question. I mean, Going into the season, I thought the Bison would lose at South Dakota State on the road, you know, later this month. But I don't feel as confident about it now because I felt their 34-point win last week at, at, at Illinois State was one of the more dominating performances of this entire dynasty run that NDSU has had. I mean, if they win out the regular, the, the rest of the regular season, and that's seven more games, that's a lot to go here when we're in the Valley. But if they do that, they will tie their all-time FCS record for, for consecutive wins at 33. I'm thinking that's maybe a new goal of theirs. I think they're a motivated team again. You mentioned in a tweet this past weekend that you had Sacramento State in your top 20, but the Hornets were one vote away from cracking into the top 25. What have you seen in Sacramento State this season that has them getting your vote? Sure, and I do feel you know they should have. Uh, crack the top 25 this week. I mean, they're they're 26 as you mentioned. Uh, they're they're just a different team than a year ago. I mean, they're they're healthier. They have Kevin Thompson running the show, and and you know they also have a solid defense. I mean, especially the, the push they're getting up front from the line. That's been a surprise to me how strong it's been. You think offense with them, but they're really become a, a you know well-rounded team. You know, Troy Taylor and his staff. They've really got it going here. Great, great to see it as the the Hornets. 
Now, Weber State continues to lead the way uh, for the Big Sky Conference the past two weeks in the polls. Let's talk about the Wildcats' special teams play from their punter and kicker to their returners. What makes them so good? You know what? You hit it on the nose here, Carl. I mean, Weber State is one of the best in the country with the special teams. I mean, from day one that Trey Tuttle, you know, stepped on campus, he's been a clutch kicker. You know, Rashid Shahid has been a game breaker since his freshman year. And, you know, now Doug Lloyd is, is so consistent as a punter. You know, if you think about it, it, it would be a big endeavor to try and gauge which team in the country has the best special teams. But I would have no problem saying Weber State is right there near the top. They're just phenomenal in the special teams. Now, staying with special teams, Northern Arizona's Louis Aguilar connected on a 57-yard field goal to tie for the best so far this season in all of Division I football. What are your thoughts on the mindset that it must take to make such a long football or a long field goal like that? Yeah. <laughs> Louie, Louie, huh? <laughs> Belief. I mean, you, you, you really have to look at your, you know, a target like this and then, and it could be, you know, the crossbar, crossbars in football, you know, making a free throw in basketball, whatever, you know, looking out at a crowd when you're delivering a speech, you have to be able to envision yourself getting the job done. I, I'm sure, you know, Aguilar has, has stared down a 57 yard field goal in practice. There's no reason he can't do it in a game. I mean, you, you just have to have that belief and focus, and, and he clearly does. Montana quarterback Dalton Sneed has now earned three straight Big Sky Offensive Player of the Week nods, and the Grizz have a bye this week. Is this good or bad timing for Montana's bye since they seem to be just in a groove? <laughs> that, that's a question that will be asked over time and, and never stop. I mean, if, if the Grizz come back on the 19th and, and struggle at Sac State, We'll all be saying, yeah, bad timing for the off week. But I'll tell you, by mid-November here, I mean, everybody needs a break physically, mentally. Uh, so it's important to have one and, and not necessarily worry about, you know, the potential loss of momentum. Grizz have been great. You know, the way Sac State is playing, though, you know, Montana is fortunate to get an extra week of prep preparation. I, I think it's a good thing. You know, you try not to worry about the, the what-ifs and, and just go about your business day to day. Now, lately, the game of the week seems to have been Sacramento State and whoever they end up playing. Would you agree that this week's Hornets at Montana State is the game of the week? Yeah, I mean, Sac, Sac State's been one of the, the stories of the year. I mean, it, it's basically a, a first-place game, and, and, you know, both teams have played well. It, it, it's a toss-up kind of game, so it, it clearly stands out as, as – as the game of the week in the big sky. Two in-state rivals uh, go at it this weekend with Southern Utah at Weber State and then Cal Poly at UC Davis. Who do you have picked to win those games? You know, you have to like the two home teams. I mean, you know, Weber State has earned its national four ranking. I mean, and, and you know, Southern Utah is still getting back on track. Although they've been a, a little better this year than last. You know, I think UC Davis, they know they can't really lose many more games. I mean, they're much better than their two and four record, obviously playing tough teams. I think they'll have a great home field atmosphere as they always do. And I just think they should be able to pick apart Cal Poly with their passing game. So I think this is a week for those two teams to get it done at home. The FCS as a whole had the hashtag FCS on game day trending last Wednesday. What do you think of the combined effort from all 13 conferences and their members to push College Game Day to have a presence in their segment? Sure, and, and kudos to the Big Sky for, for really driving this. I mean, it, I think it's definitely brought together the conferences and, and really the fan base in general. I mean, to me, it, this effort hits the mark whether or not you get the desired result. I mean, a weekly spot on game day, seems natural to everybody considering all the games that are on the ESPN networks and, and that includes the playoffs. I, I love the social media effort and I hope it continues because it makes total sense for this to, to get done on ESPN Clark. All right. That's Craig Haley of stats. Thank you, Craig, for joining us. And as always have a great day. All right. Thank you, Carl. Enjoy the game. Thank you. Big Sky fans, make sure you download the Pluto TV app on your smartphone, tablet, or TV and check out our new channel lineup in the 500s. 
Idaho at Portland State, Cal Poly at UC Davis, and Southern Utah at Weber State can all be watched on Pluto TV this week. The Root Sports Game of the Week features Northern Colorado at Eastern Washington. Kickoff is slated for 1 p.m. Pacific time at Roos Field. The 11 Sports Game of the Week that can also be watched on Pluto TV will feature Cal Poly at number 24, UC Davis. Game time at UC Davis Health Stadium is scheduled for 5 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks again to Sacramento State head coach Troy Taylor, Weber State defensive end George Tarlis, Big Sky Commissioner Tom Wistersill, and Stats Craig Haley for joining us on the show today. Enjoy this week in Big Sky Football.